The Hawks are in the midst of five games in eight days, and they start a three-game road trip tonight in the Valley of the Sun, looking to start a winning streak as they meet the Arizona Coyotes for Blackhawks hockey, presented by Xfinity from Gila River Arena in Glendale, Arizona. With that, we say hello and thanks for joining us with Colby Cohen, Mike Modico with you. An absolute pleasure to fill in for the legends, Pat and Eddie. And Colby, no player or coach wants to look too far ahead publicly, but we will. And if you look at what lies ahead for the Blackhawks, they want to start tonight to get something rolling. Yeah, well, you said it perfectly because if you're a player on the Chicago Blackhawks, you're not looking ahead. You are living day to day. You are worried about the next 20 minutes in front of you. But well, that's not our job, Mike. Our job is to look ahead. Our job is to talk about the different storylines. And when you look at the Blackhawks' up upcoming schedule, there's a lot of opportunity here for the Blackhawks to get going. When Derek King first took over the Blackhawks, they went on a little bit of a run. As of late, it's been a skid. But when you look at this schedule, there are teams on here that are very winnable games. If the Blackhawks get back to that structure, they get back to defending well. I see a lot of points available over the next six games of this schedule. Yeah, and it starts tonight against the Coyotes. Meanwhile, Tuesday against the Avalanche, Alex Dabrinkit had two more goals. So he's up to 20 on the season, and it's no surprise. 13 of those, the primary assist to, of course, Patrick King. Yeah, I don't know where to start first because you're talking about one of the game's elite shooters, one of the game's elite passers. And when you look at the way that Alex Dabrinkit is scoring these goals, you look at 88 because, boy, has he been feeding the puck well. Patrick Kane is such an elite passer. You see the goal against Colorado the other night. It's on and off Patrick Kane's stick before anybody has an opportunity to defend the play. It's one of the reasons he has been so deadly setting up Dabrinkit. And when you watch Alex Dabrinkit score these goals, you might look at it and say, well, he makes that look easy. Well, he gets to the right spots. As a goal scorer, he knows how to find those soft areas between the coverage He's always ready to shoot. His stick is always cocked back, and it's ready to shoot. It's one of the reasons why that one-timer is so elite. And boy, those two have not slowed down for this team. And we know all about those two. Now, meanwhile, we introduce you to a new face who will join the Hawks shortly because yesterday they made a trade, and the Blackhawks shipped out Alex Nylander to Pittsburgh, and from the Penguins in return, they get Sam Lafferty. Yeah, this is a player that Ron Hextall did not want to give up, but it came down to numbers. He was going to have to go on waivers, and they would have lost him for nothing, so they take a chance with Alex Nylander, a guy who Kyle Davidson did not see as a part of the future of this organization. Organization. He brings in Sam Lafferty, a guy who's going to challenge the bottom six. He'll get some penalty kill opportunity. We thought we might see him tonight, but unfortunately, he comes to Arizona. He's in COVID protocol. Joining him in COVID protocol, Brandon Hagel, Eric Gustafson. So a couple of lineup tweaks for the Blackhawks tonight. And one of them brings an opportunity for a young defenseman, Nicholas Bodin. He was on the taxi squad. He gets activated to the active roster. He's going to get his second game of the season here for the Chicago Blackhawks and this is what it's all about Mike it's about opportunity it's about guys having the next man up mentality we're gonna see him here tonight the Blackhawks made some other recalls some other roster moves for the remainder of this road trip so the world we're living in sure is and it has been that way so they go up against the Coyotes in this one no secret Arizona has really struggled Six wins, the fewest points in the NHL, but they do have a productive defenseman, a guy you know well in Shane Gostisbehere. Yeah, Shane Gostisbehere has been the bright spot for this Arizona Coyotes team where they haven't had a lot of bright spots. When you watch his game, I mean, he is an elite offensive defenseman. He's playing with a lot of confidence. His ability to make players miss, but I got to watch him in Philadelphia for years. His lateral movement makes him so dangerous. He's like an extra forward out on the ice, and if you're the Chicago Blackhawks tonight, you You've got to know where he is on the ice. He's a guy who sneaks between the layers. He likes to be involved. So if you're defending him as a winger, your head has to be on a swivel. Yeah, well, that is the obstacle for the Blackhawks tonight. Getting set to go in the desert against the Arizona Coyotes. But first, a stop <laughs> at your local jeweler. How about that? Hawks, Coyotes, puck drop next. Join Lance Briggs, Alex Brown, Olin Krutz, and David Kaplan for their final show of the season.
right, Glendale, Arizona, the site for this one, Gila River Arena. And the Blackhawks ready to tangle with the Coyotes and our starting goalies. As always, brought to you by Ford, Mark andre Fleury between the posts, the second game back in there since coming out of COVID protocols. And as Derek King said to us today, it is hard not to put him in there right now. Other side, Karel Vamelka, the 25-year-old rookie from the Czech Republic. The record, not impressive, 2-12-1, but he's coming off 46 saves last time out for the Coyotes on Tuesday night. The lucky jacket, perhaps back for Derek King. He said he took it right out of the glass case, right off the wall. All right, so off we go. This first period is brought to you by Toyota. So we touched on it, Colby, in the open. 11 forwards, seven defensemen for the Hawks. What does that do? What do you expect to see? As you said, a lot of 88. That's exactly what it means. We're going to see a lot of Patrick Kane tonight without Brandon Hagel up front. The Blackhawks go to seven defensemen and 11 forwards. It's going to be just a lot of mix and match. It's the same thing on the back end. When you have seven defensemen, Mike, it's just next man up. Who's ready to go? Face-off win to the Coyotes. That shoveled wide of Flurry in the net for the Hawks. Arizona still with it. Clayton Keller leads the team in goals and points. Threw it on net. Swept back behind. This is Keller on the first line for Arizona. Try to set up a one-timer to former Hawk Nick Schmaltz. Keller with it. A product of BU, former seventh overall draft pick. There, Schmaltz didn't get it off cleanly. And he maintains possession around Riley Stillman and company. Stillman out there with McCabe defensively for the Hawks. And back out to neutral. Told you just six wins for this Arizona team. Fewest points in the NHL. They have really struggled. And just one win since the start of December. So the Hawks trying to grab a win to start this road trip. Yeah, and their goaltender kept them in the game against Winnipeg the other night. I mean, he was blitzed all game long. I think you mentioned 40 or 45 saves for Lamelka against the Jets. Hawks in their own end trying to start something. They've got the dock line out there with Entwistle and Kurashev again with the Hawks coming off the loss in overtime to Kale McCarr in the abs at the UC on Tuesday. Coyotes control, and they flick it out to center ice. The Hawks with it off a dock stick and back to Calvin DeHaan. Goes D to D. Murphy turns back. He got in a fight three minutes in. He remembered how the first game with the Abs went in the season opener on Tuesday. Doc with it as the Hawks enter along the half wall. Kubalik nudges it behind for Kurashev. Kurashev with it. Threw a pass out in front looking for Kubalik. Kubalik banks it back. Pass Kurashev into the corner. Stillman steps up. Tosses it back behind. Coyotes with it. Phil Kessel got it free. Here comes Cam Deneen out to center and thrown at Fleury. Turned over and offside on Arizona. And from our WeatherTech RoboCam, we'll go back just a few seconds ago to some nifty play by Phil Kurashev behind the net. Watch him bank the puck off the back of the net to lose Travis Boyd, who was covering him. He's looking out in front to his wine mate, Dominic Kubalik, but that's a tricky little play, Mike. That's a hard thing to defend if you're on your edges and leaning on a player. When he's able to change direction like that and use the back of the net, it becomes real challenging for a defenseman. Kershev, two goals in the last six games. The Coyotes get a shot on Flurry that misses the net. The Brinkett wrestling for it near center ice. Now Taves. Here's Debrinkit coming off those two goals that he had in a 40-second span. They got the UC jumping on Tuesday. Hawks turn it over. Keller trying to corral it on his stick and goes back to his own end. Yeah, and if you're the Blackhawks, you want to take Arizona out of this thing early. Do not give them life at home. Alex Galchenyuk was driving in on Seth Jones. Couldn't elude him. And Flurry will cover it up just over three minutes in. And how about the Chicago Blackhawks fans? We've got more Chicago Blackhawks jerseys in the stands right now than Arizona Coyotes. I mean, this is a pretty good turnout, so well done. 
Chicago Blackhawks fans showing up here in the desert. I guess getting out here to some warmer weather, not so bad all the time, Mike. What do you think of the, the chain and the medallion? I think that was probably a little too big for my style, but hey, never say never. Not in the arsenal. Everybody no. has seen me wear some different things on the air, so you know, never say never. Self-awareness is a beautiful thing, folks. Dyson Mayo with it, and he scores. The rookie defenseman with his second goal of the season, and the Hawks go down early on the road in Glendale. Not really the start that you're looking for if you're the Chicago Blackhawks. And, you know, you look at the way Gostas there and his partner Mayo play, they're very active defensemen, and you know, that's a simple exchange up at the point, and, you know, Dylan Strom's got to do a better job there. He really does. It's all about angles, and Strom gets on the wrong side of Mayo, who just gets all this room to walk down. He beats Flurry up over the shoulder. It's a good shot. Not the start you're looking for. Now, all of a sudden, you're playing from behind. Mayo had scored in his first NHL game back in October, now gets his second here. The Coyotes come back in with Gostas Bear. Hawks win it, turn it over, Phil Kessel is denied by Flurry, and a big early save to prevent this from being 2 0. Yeah, nice save by Marc Andre Flurry, and then some conversation between the former teammates on the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Phil Kessel, not a guy you want to turn the puck over to right in the slot with a clean look at the net. But you know, when I look at the way the first couple minutes of this game has started, we talked to Derek King, and he talked about the lateral plays that are turning into turnovers. And we've seen that tonight. So that is something he has addressed with this team. And they're going to need to clean that up quickly. Another face-off win in the Coyotes' O-zone and a shot whistled past Flurry. Derek King has thought all year since he's taken over as interim coach about slow starts. And whistle in pursuit. Puck slams around the boards. Up toward the Arizona bench. And whistle between his legs. Dropped it off for Duck. Hershef fires and saved by Vamelka. Deneen with it now for the Coyotes in their corner. Kept in by the Hawks in the Ozone. And Deneen. Starts it out for Arizona to neutral. And back to the Hawk. Four and a half minutes in. Starting the road trip for the Hawks down early on. Here's to break it with speed. Had it nudged off his stick. Now Kubalik fires wide of the net. Shot goes bouncing in on Vamelka. Well, that was tipped by Kubalik out in the high slot. That would have been trouble if it made it all, all the way down to the net. Out to break it. Cross ice pass, trying to connect with Taves, coming off a very good game on Tuesday. He scored in the second period to get the Hawks on the board in that one. We talked to Derek King today. He reiterated one of the best games that Taves has played this season. Scored a goal and almost ended the game in overtime on a great individual play. So you see him more on the penalty kill now, and he can really make a difference winning those draws. You hear about the confidence guys have when they know he's in the face-off circle, and you're just much more ready to clear the puck on a kill. All six draws so far in this one have belonged to the Coyotes in the first five-plus minutes. Kept in by the Hawks, here's Jujar Kara. He's out there with Carpenter and Strom. Jones slides it back to Dylan Strom. Playing against the team that drafted him. Traffic out in front from Carpenter. Back to the blue line, Jones. D to D, McCabe. High slot, McCabe trying to get it back from Strom. Threw it on net. Now Jones with it. Two assists the other night for Seth Jones. Strom. That hit a body out in front. A lot of ozone time here for the Hawks. Touched out, back out to neutral. Can you hear the chance? Let's go, Hawks. Antoine Roussel with a backhand try, denied by Fleur. And we saw it just walking out of the hotel. Hawks fans all over the place, as is the norm. Kessel's pass picked up. Borkstrom trying to win a puck. Instead, it's Deneen for Arizona. Good reach from Henry Borkstrom. 
So Borkstrom, Kane, and Kubalik is out with them as well. And here is Borkstrom looking for Kubalik cross ice. Fights back to the puck. Arizona enters with Kessel. Three-time All-Star with more than 900 points in his career. Coming up on 400 career goals. Seven minutes in, Hawks down by one. Kept in along the blue line. Here's Kessel centering all the way across and fanned on by Larson. And now Dehan gets to it for the Hawks out of their own zone. Boy, Arizona's had some good opportunities early on. Yeah, one area where the Blackhawks have desperately needed to improve is that offensive zone possession time, really working the puck in and around. But right now, the Arizona Coyotes have just done a better job to start this game of getting the puck down low and winning those battles along the walls, Mike. And they've made it difficult so far for the Blackhawks to transition up the ice because they've spent the majority of the time down in the offensive zone. Coming up on the first eight minute mark into this first period here in Glendale. Good view of the puck battle in the corner. Jones is over there with Doc for the Hawks. And here comes Kurashev. Bill Kurashev on the takeaway for the Hawks. Got Entwistle with him. Slapped into the corner. Entwistle lays the body in behind. And that puck gets batted out of play. So 11.42 to go in this first period. And the Hawks trail Arizona, one Arizona number nine, Myron Pelly for the LA game. Fuck over the glass. This new year, each $50 ticket includes a 300 level game ticket, a hot dog, drink, and buttery popcorn. Scan the QR code now to secure yours. Well, just before we went to break, there was a penalty on the Arizona Coyotes. Clayton Keller knocks the puck up out of the air over the glass it's a delay game and mike that's one of those where i don't think he could have done that if he was trying to do that so that's an unlucky bounce for clayton keller but hey the blackhawks are taking this power play because so far they've definitely been a little bit flat and again they had two power play goals in short order in a span of 40 seconds on tuesday that was after just one power play goal in the previous four games for the hawks Doc's out there with Strome, Kane, DeBrinket, and Jones against a very shaky penalty kill group for Arizona, second worst in the NHL. Here's Jones on a one-timer save by Vamelka. And noticeably not on this top unit, Jonathan Taves, and we talked to Derek King about that, and they're really just trying to use him more on the penalty kill because he's so valuable, and there's the saved by Vamelka on Seth Jones and love to see that high shot early in the power play Mike I love that establishment because then all of a sudden 88 to 12 that lane across the box that becomes way more open here is to bring it off a face off win for the Hawks 40 plus seconds into the power play Kane along the boards he's got Doc in front Strom down low to bring it out there as well here's Strom holding in the corner Dylan Strome back to the point. Jones goes center point, goes back for Kane. Kane with it, hanging on to it. That shot gets blocked. And the Coyotes nudge it out, but kept in by Seth Jones. And now cleared by Arizona. Just under 50 seconds left on the Hawks power play as Doc went down. Picked off. Shot is saved by Vamelka. Patrick Kane with a good look towards the net on the back half of this power play as the second unit jumps up and over the board. So we'll get a, a chance to see the Blackhawks second power play unit. And Patrick Kane is looking for that next goal. It seems to be a little bit snake bitten. He's figured in on all the assists in the last couple of games. But you can see leading the team in points this year. Taves out there now on the second power play unit and he wins the draw. Talked about the management of his minutes. Here he is with it. Back to the point, Caleb Jones with traffic in front. Kubalik was there, so was Borkstrom. Wrestling for it along the half wall. Hawks trying to win possession. Final 15 seconds 
of this power play. Borgstrom kept it alive. Here's Caleb Jones throwing it in front. Kubelik trying to tip. Final five seconds on the penalty on Keller. Jones calling for it. Caleb Jones, that gets blocked and cleared, and Keller out of the box. Flurry plays it back off the boards. So the Hawks come up empty on their first power play. Entwistle jockeying, stayed strong on the puck, hangs on to it. Tosses it in for Kara. Vemelka back to play it. We saw him working a lot on that at morning skate today for the Coyotes. Along the blue line, the Hawks with it. DeHaan threw it out in front, looking for a tip from Carpenter. And Arizona speeds back. Up ice. Christian Fisher, the Chicago native. And the second round pick of the Coyotes. Former teammate of Caleb Jones at the U.S. National Program. A lot of familiarity out on the ice tonight. Program you know well in your many high school stops. <laughs> Hawks out to center. Just under nine to go in this first period. Hawks down by one. Covered up by Vamelka. Well, the Hawks had a power play for the first time, trying to get something started after the early Arizona goal from Dyson Mayo, but nothing doing for Taves and company. Hello, our Blackhawks insider, Charlie Romeliotis on NBCSportsChicago.com, presented by Nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. Get to enjoy knowing the Vuk as much as you do the jingle at JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. And no doubt, Charlie, when he's not busy in the studio, he's going to be talking about three guys for the Hawks in COVID protocol. So this Hawks team is shorthanded here tonight in Glendale. Got it in the offensive zone. Just past the midway point in this first period, down by one to Arizona. Alongside Colby Cohen, Mike Monaco, and to the great Pat and Eddie, along with our entire crew behind the scenes. Taking off the stick of Nick Schmaltz. Hawks under pressure back in their own end. That's McCabe. Look how aggressive the Arizona Coyotes have been on the wall this period. It's given the Blackhawks all sorts of trouble breaking out, but they're just flying their defensemen down the wall, already pre-pinched on the strong side of the ice. So that's something they're going to have to adjust on. Right? Strong got it on a feed from Jones, bouncing puck in the slot. And Arizona takes it away. What What is the counter to that goal? You got to use the middle of the ice, but you got to be thorough because if you turn the puck over in the middle of the ice, which they have, that's when those chances start coming back. That's when Marc-Andre Fleury's got to be forced to make saves that are under such duress. So, Dave's picked off the pass and trying to battle toward it. And that goes up and out of play as well. Jonathan Taves talking to the refs, wanting a delay game call, but it looks as if the refs are saying that was deflected up and off his stick, but he will continue to lobby, and you can't blame him. That second power play unit with Jonathan Taves was successful. There's Derek King. We mentioned the sport code. He broke that out. What, about a month ago, was it, when the Blackhawks needed a big win and they got it? So he went back to the lucky jacket, Mike. It is a sharp look. I think Pat Boyle has one that looks just like <laughs> it. So we'll have to watch the intermission show to check it out. Kessel comes back with it for the Coyotes, and he is stonewalled by Fleury. They had something to say earlier from their time together with the Penguins. Yeah, you got to think there's a friendly rivalry between Phil Kessel and Mark Andre Fleury, longtime Pittsburgh Penguins teammates, and Kessel's known for the quickness in his release. I mean, his ability to get the puck off his stick and on net, but the flower was up to the task on that one. As is often the case, a face-off win from 19 for the Hawks. Arizona with it, though. Kessel in the slot, hung on to it, and denied again by Fleury. Who's got the best fans? That's a very good question. Let's put up a poll. Come on, England. Tell you. With WebEx, the McLaren F1 team and their fans are competing like never before. WebEx, driving hybrid work. Shots on goal, seven aside so far, and Phil Kessel's been busy the last few minutes. Yeah, Marc-Andre Fleury smothering the puck. No rebound. You like to see that. Face-off win, though, for Arizona. Shot didn't make it through, and here come the Hawks back the other way. 
Bill Kurashev tried to center, knocked off his stick in the corner. Now Kirby Dock playing with Entwistle in behind. Up against Gostas Bear. Along the blue line, here's Stillman, and he gets level. Dropped by Liam O'Brien. Whistle trying to win the puck but couldn't, and here come the Coyotes. Dump it in, head off for a change. Stillman doesn't like what he sees, so he waits for that set breakout. This is about the most passive we've seen Arizona yet. They're sitting back at the far blue line. Most of this period, they've been way up the ice. And you know, you asked me, how do you counter that? Well, you can take advantage when, when the Arizona Coyotes run out to the walls. You can use the middle of the ice. You can create two-on-ones and odd man rushes. Dylan Strom couldn't corral that one. Now Jones in behind for Tara. Strom tapped it along. Looking for Carpenter, who got tied up. Here's Jones with it, backpedaling, thinking, firing, and it's saved out in front. Strom with it. Back to McCabe. Now Strom hanging on to it. Along the boards, McCabe. Kara. Turns back to the corner, matched up with Deneen. Five and a half to go in this first period. Borgstrom onto the ice. Kane out there as well. Back to the blue line, that gets deflected. Fisher uses Andrew Ladd, the veteran in his first year in Arizona. And the line couldn't contain that one with 5.13 to go. All right, fans, let's take a look at tonight's match. So we step aside the Hawks down by one. You can stream the Hawks. Wherever you go with the My Teams app, read articles, listen to the Blackhawks Talk podcast, which is a great one. Get an assist from the QR code on your screen and download the app now. And Perhaps that's how you have found us tonight. Glad to be with you. Five minutes to go in the first period. Colby Cohen, Mike Monaco in for Pat and Eddie in Glendale, Arizona. Here's Patrick Kane. Stops on a dime. He's out there with Kurashev at Borkstrom. Now Jones looking for McKay. Kurashev slides it along, Kane in the corner. Kane looks as good as he has been, at least in terms of his skating and his speed, the other night, according to Derek King. Yeah, he's got a gear when he gets the puck that most players do not have. He's able to skate faster. Most players are slowing down, and that's one of the reasons Patrick Kane is just so deceptive and hard to defend. Tame's shot is swallowed by Vamelka. We had a big hit earlier here from Arizona's Liam O'Brien. Yeah, Riley Stillman kind of leaves himself exposed, thinking about trying to maybe make a play and beat O'Brien. He opens up his shoulders, and he's so square to Liam O'Brien that Liam just leans into Stillman up at the point. And important to mention, Riley Stillman, his father is on the opposing bench tonight. Corey Stillman, longtime NHL player, one of the coaches for Arizona. Family affair here, when you look at that opposite bench for Riley Stillman. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I so badly want to say the Phoenix Coyotes. I mean, it is at the tip of my tongue. There's a look at Corey Stillman, the longtime NHLer, but it is just at the tip of my tongue every time I say the Arizona Coyotes to say the Phoenix Coyotes. We grew up with it, and it has been some time, what, 2014-15 season when they made the change, but... Still feels unfamiliar in a lot of ways. Puck thrown at Vamelka. Taves with it, tried to center with Kubalik waiting on the crease. Kubalik trying to win it back, but the Coyotes with it, skating out of their own end to center. Now Phil Kessel, veteran in his 30s, playing on an expiring deal. That got tipped near Flurry. With some friendly fire, and Flurry covers. A little more work by Marc-Andre Fleury. We saw how good he was the other night against Colorado, and 
Mike, you mentioned the friendly fire. You'll take the blocks. You know, it's been well documented here in Chicago how much Marc-Andre Fleury appreciates his post. So I think he'll appreciate a block or two along the way. See his numbers against the Coyotes. He's been stellar. And we talked about this earlier, Mike. I wonder if there's a team that he doesn't have good numbers against because he's just been so good for so long in the NHL. I, I just can't imagine any one team really has had his number. And again, as Derek King said to us this afternoon, hard not to keep rolling with him, certainly based on his pedigree alone. We all know that about the flower. But then also with Kevin Lankinen still in the COVID protocol. Three more, unfortunately, join him today from the Hawks roster. Got a penalty upcoming here. Doc got tied up with the Coyotes. It's going to be a Blackhawks power play. Looks like a holding call is going to come on Andrew Ladd. I think everybody's pretty familiar with Andrew Ladd, the former Chicago Blackhawk. He's spent some time in Arizona number 16, two minute minor holding. With the Islanders and found his way out here to the desert. Yeah, they traded him away with a couple of years remaining on a hefty seven-year, 38-plus million dollar deal, and he goes to the penalty box. Yeah, that's a hold on Kirby Doc. Kirby doing a nice job down below the goal line, using his size, something I know he wants to do more is use that big frame of his. There's a Brinkett, Strom, Doc, Seth Jones, Coyote and Kane. Second power play, the Hawks had three shots. With nothing to show for it, their first time. The first period. About 3.20 to go Coleman. in this opening period. Let's see if the Hawks can tie. Kane skates with it, threw it out in front. Tyson Mayo was there. He's the goal scorer in this one out on the penalty kill unit for Arizona. Doc needs to break it, and he is denied. What a save by Karel Vamelka, and to break it nearly tied it. Yeah, and Alex to break it. You can see him laughing. Probably in a little bit of disbelief that the goaltender is able to make this save and wow That's the right place at the right time if you're Vimelka you see the cat right in his spot Nice play by Kirby Doc to take that puck off his skate dish it across to Alex to bring it and It's a big-time save by the Coyote netminder. Face-off win for the Hawks on the power play after the denial on to bring it Strom and Kane play together. Back to Kane, trying to feed to Brinkett. And the pass deflected, and the Coyotes clear. Johan Larson, long-time Buffalo Sabre, takes it back. Former teammate of Jake McCabe in Buffalo. And of course, Phil Housley, one of the other coaches here in Arizona, was their coach in Buffalo. And when I was reading over the different notes for the game tonight. There's just a lot of a lot of connections between these two teams. Oh, good pass. Another save. Strom on the rebound. Couldn't get all of it. Some chances here for the Hawks on their second power play tonight. Nothing to show for it just yet. Three shots on the first. Three shots here on the second on the Lad Minor. Urshev and Taves couldn't link up and back toward Flirt. Yeah, you'd like to see Taves just skate that one in. He's trying to ladder that puck across to Phil Kurashev, but I'd rather see him just dump the puck and go after it. Caleb Jones banked it off the boards. Borgstrom now back to Taves. Taves skates with him. Caleb Jones along the blue line. Thrown out in front as we get back to even strength and covered up. There's a look at the last chance for the Blackhawks on the power play. The original shot by Alex Debrinkin. And watch Dylan Strome. The puck just hops over his stick. That thing's up on edge. and. It just goes off the top part of his blade. You can see him on the bench right there. He probably thought he had one there in the back of the net. That's just a bad bounce for Dylan Strome, but right place. 
see shots on goal favor the Hawks now 13-7. And the final 90 seconds of this first period with the Hawks down by one. Yeah, this last eight or nine minutes has been much better by the Blackhawks. They've spent a lot more time in the offensive zone after kind of having a rough time breaking the puck out or getting anything going through the neutral zone. So some in-game adjustments made by the boys in white, the Derek King squad, and they've had a lot more success getting into that offensive zone. I remember it was a slow start in the first as well on Tuesday against Colorado. Yeah, what's interesting is the Blackhawks had a hard time with their starts early in the year, but when Derek King took over, they seemed to get rid of that pattern in their game. So that's obviously something that they know they can clean up because they have cleaned that up before. Doc loses the faceoff. Jones picked it out of the air, but here's Kessler. The final minute of the first. Is there very creative offensive minded player and the Coyotes score again makes it 2 nothing. Yeah, this shot absolutely gets deflected by Johan Larson. And you could tell by the positioning of Marc Andre Fleury that he's playing the initial shot that's going to come from up top and. Shane Goss is there, who's down, he's a part of the offense, he dishes the puck out to the point to Cam Deneen, who fires one off of Larson's backside. And, you know, this is just a bad balance. It's unlucky. It's what happens when you shoot the puck at the net and there's traffic. You see Larson, who's uncovered around the net. I mean, you've just got to get a body, a stick on him, something. But... You make your own breaks in this game, Mike, and so far, the Arizona Coyotes, they've made theirs. So the first goal of the season for Johan Larson, 29-year-old from Sweden. Oh, excuse me, it was Moser who shot the puck from the point, not the knee. Guy and Moser playing in just his fifth NHL game. Hawks with it, though, final 30 seconds of the first to break it at a one-time opportunity. Whistle stops play with 23 and a half left in the first. Hey, Hawks fans, Xfinity Mobile delivers fast station, nationwide 5G included at no extra cost. Save on your wireless bill with Xfinity Mobile. So a goal at 19.06 in the first and 88 in the Hawks. They're down two nothing here to Arizona. Only won six games all season. They've got the fewest points in the NHL this year with 15. Last 10 seconds in the first. Here's Kubalik. Mayo with it. And the first marker for Arizona. And the Hawks, after the first 20, trail 2-0 here in Glendale, Arizona. Well, not the start the Hawks in division. Intermission report coming up. Pat, Kaylee, and Charlie take it away. Dave's Drive, score a new Chevy. Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Fourth game back from the layoff for the Hawks, and after one period in Glendale, Arizona, down 2-0 to the Coyotes as we get ready to start the second. And we tell you that, hey, Thursday you can join us. Next week, the 13th, when the Blackhawks take on Montreal, the salute Blackhawks legend Andrew Shaw, who announced the end of his playing career during last season. It's a night full of celebration in store with the mutt himself set to be honored inside the UC. You can visit blackhawks.com slash tickets to secure yours today. And we'll go and take a look at the Xfinity Telestrator from the first period. And we talked about how aggressive the Arizona Coyotes like to play. And look in the neutral zone. Shane Gostas here is just way up the ice, anticipating, trying to break plays up. And that's not just happening in the neutral zone. This Arizona team is pinching down the wall. Sometimes with both of their defensemen, it's a free pinch. It's hard to get out of the zone. I asked Riley Stillman about it, and he talked about needing to really clean up the breakout, and it seemed to be a problem. But when you look at the possession time, Mike, from that first period, it's a lot of possession for Chicago, but not enough 
possession in that offensive zone. You see the numbers, but it's it's the chances, it's the grade A opportunities. That's something they need to create more in front of the goaltender, take his eyes, make him a little bit uncomfortable. And in terms of scoring chances in the first, five on five, Arizona with the edge, eight five in that category, and five on five, high danger scoring chances also favored Arizona three to one. So we start the second. Colby Cohen, Mike Monaco in for Pat and Eddie, our entire NBC Sports Chicago crew. And the Blackhawks are hoping that the second period tonight is just like the second period on Tuesday against the Avalanche. Yeah, how did we end up with the warm weather road trip? How about this? We landed yesterday, 66 degrees. We're gonna have to get a couple of bottles of wine for Pat and Eddie for giving us the warm, <laughs> the warm weather road trip. I would have figured Winnipeg, Calgary, but no, we get Arizona and Vegas. I said you were wearing a winter coat walking out of morning. Not speed. a winter you coat. It, what, what, like a transitional coat? Come on, get with the fashionable times, yeah. would you? It's no. a transition piece. Not my area of expertise. All right. Never well, been stay in your lane. for well dressed. Dehan tees one up, fires one on net at Karel <laughs> Vamelka. <laughs> we got the, the birds chirping from the cheap seats right now. <laughs> what did Mitch say? Oh, boy. Not your area of expertise. We'll, we'll chat either. with him later about that. The whole crew behind the scenes in this first minute of the second. And whistle in behind. Trying to sync up with Kirby Doc. Doc in the corner. Still with it. Hangs on to it. Finds Murphy against the team he was drafted by. Almost trickled home. And a rebound there for Kershev. And they score. Whoa, Kirby Doc. And the Hawks are on the board. Well, against the Colorado Avalanche, the first period not so pretty. Well, then the second and third was all Chicago Blackhawks, and they're off to a good start here in the second period. But Connor Murphy, you mentioned the team he's drafted against, just gets the puck in on the net, and then Phil Kershev gets absolutely robbed by Vimelka, and I mean 10 bell save Rob right on the doorstep, but Kirby Doc knocks this puck out of the air. The hand-eye coordination that it takes to knock that puck out of the air in real speed, that's a big time play by Kirby Doc, and the Hawks have some luck. Almost swatting out some frustration there for a guy who's been so critical of himself, and in particular, his finishing ability. And that'll do for Kirby Doc. His sixth of the season, and the Hawks are on the board early on here, just 62 seconds into the second period. You love to see all the plays right now in the NHL, all the players trying different things, knocking pucks out of the air, the Trevor Zegras play, the Michigan yep. play, so good to see Kirby figure in. A tough shift in overtime the other night, but this gets him back out on the board and gets him feeling confident again. Fox with it, they enter the zone with Debrinkit. Shot goes off of J.J. Moser. He helped set up that frustrating second goal for Arizona in the first. Jujar Kara out there, his fourth game since returning from the injury. And back out to center. This is Nicholas Bodan's first shift. He did not get one in the first period. You see him out here in the second early on. Again, he was... Added to the taxi squad yesterday. The taxi squad has returned these last couple of weeks. And then today, placed on the active roster. An 11 forward, seven defensemen again, if you're just joining us for the Hawks tonight. Stillman, he told you during the break, he's got his mother here, of course, we showed you his father, and his brother and sister back home watching. Hawks trying to hang on to it. Here's Kara. A wraparound try on Vamelka. Jujar Kara still with it, hangs on to it, and knocked aside. Now DeHaan throws it wide of the net. Here's Connor Murphy. D to D, DeHaan. Back to Murphy. Traffic out in front, rebound is loose, and the Hawks couldn't slam it home. Borgstrom was trying to get to it. Hawks nearly took it away with Patrick Kane. Much better start to the second period here. The Blackhawks look like a completely different team. I mean, there's just so much more energy, so much more jump in their step, and they've controlled this first four minutes here to start the second. 7-0, the advantage in shots for the Hawks this period. 
here in the first three and a half minutes coming out of intermission. Look back out towards center ice, and Jones collects and uses Kane. Coyotes trying to skate onto it with Kessel. Back out toward the logo and whipped in. Flurry couldn't cut it off all the way around for Larson. Credited with that second Arizona goal in the first. Kessel couldn't connect with Deneen. Here's Doc. And the Hawks enter with Kane. Kane drops it into the slot. Shot save. And a denial on Kubalik. Nice job by Dominic Kubalik backtracking to win it from Larson. Much better first four plus minutes here in the second. It's a Coyotes team that all six of their wins have been one goal win. So they have not blown anyone out in their half dozen wins this season. A lot of hockey left in this game. The Blackhawks playing with a ton more energy this period. So. Kirby Doc in particular tried to go through the wickets. Still with it in the corner. Now Kurashev. Back to the blue line. Stillman spins on it. The Hawks keep it in. Doc banks it back to the point. And a shot goes behind Pamelka. Stillman pinches. Couldn't sweep it over to safety. And out comes Arizona. Schmaltz trying to elude the hop. Schmaltz sends it back for Clayton Keller. 10 goals, 13 assists for him this season. The youngster out of BU. And here come the Blackhawks out to center. And whistle. Shoots and scores! Just like that, we are tied! Mackenzie Entwistle, another guy who's been on the transaction wire, going from the taxi squad, coming back to the active lineup against Colorado the other night. Gets a big goal to get this Blackhawks team back tied at two. But how about the pass from Jonathan Taves, your captain? You love to see the offense starting to come. Waits for Shane Gostisphere to put his stick down, throws the little sauce over his stick. Right on to Mackenzie Entwistle and Vimelka, not able to get across. And this six and a half minutes has looked a heck of a lot different than the first 20, Mike. Fourth goal of the season for Mackenzie Entwistle. And he's got a point in four of his last six. He plays this hard. Game's tied too. Mackenzie goes to the net. You saw the goal he figured in with Jonathan Taves against the Colorado Avalanche with two or three opportunities right on top of the goaltender. And he's not afraid to get his nose dirty around the net. And he's a guy who had to earn his way onto this hockey club during training camp. And he's made the most of his opportunities since he came back from that high ankle sprain. The assist to Taves and DeHaan on the end whistle goal. Oh, I don't know what Derek King said to them between the period, but boy, it worked. Honestly, in a very similar way to Tuesday night against the Avalanche as that goes up into the netting. Well, you gotta love it. Didn't take long here in the second for the Hawks to even this game. Kirby Doc swatting one out of the air. And twisty Mackenzie Edwistle ties the game. Welcome back into Arizona here in the second period. I want to go back to the Blackhawk first goal. Watch Kirby Doc's hands. Watch how he takes his bottom hand and slides it farther down his stick, almost like a reverse choke up on the shaft of his stick before he banged that thing into the net. But looked like he might have had a little baseball in his previous life, maybe as a kid. But that was a Pretty impressive play to knock that one out of the air, but just that awareness, Mike, to lower that bottom hand. I mean, that makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to knock a puck out of the air at full speed like that. Yeah, it's just remarkable to us mere mortals when you see something like that from Kirby Doc that got the Blackhawks on the board. And it looks like Henrik Borgstrom's gonna go here for a high stick, and Dyson Mayo is signaling for his face, checking for blood. I don't think there is any, but. We'll go back and take a look at it in the corner. Oh, it's a follow through in the corner. So to me, I, I don't think that this should be a penalty. 
when you have the puck and you're making an offensive Chicago play and you're following through, guy hits a player in the face, very similar to Tuesday. Alex DeBrinkin. Alex yep. I mean, that to me should not be a penalty. I, I mean, I don't... We'll have to go back and maybe take another look at it after the next whistle, but if you're the offensive player and you are in a shooting motion with the puck, that should not be a penalty. So I, I'm not really sure what the rule is because on Tuesday night, we saw something completely different. Here's another quick look. You see Borgstrom with the puck, moves it. Yeah, to me, that is not a penalty. I think the refs made the complete wrong call there. I mean, that is exactly what happened with Alex Dabrinkit, and we were given the explanation that it's an offensive play with a shooting motion. A frustrating one for the Hawks, and they go on the kill here. They were two for two on the kill, an area that has struggled recently. Two for two on Tuesday, and now matched up with this Coyotes power play that has struggled this year, 29th in the NHL at 14%. Ladd kept it in. He's out there with Kessel, Moser as well. Larson and Boyd complete the group on this power play unit for Arizona with a shot that didn't make it through to Flirt. Larson chops it all the way around. Back in behind for Ladd. Larson back to the blue line in front of the Arizona bench. Kessel cross ice. Here's Larson waiting. A tip out in front from Ladd didn't go home. And the Hawks clear. What do you thought of the Hawks penalty kill in these last few games? It's improving, and I think part of the reason is because you're seeing a lot more Jonathan Taves. You're seeing him not only start the penalty kill, but they're going back to him. That's something Derek King did not do early in the season, looking to manage his minutes. So now you're seeing him two, maybe three times within that two-minute kill. Derek King said to us today that's been an open conversation with Jonathan Taves. He knows the situation, and he's all in on helping out even more so on the penalty kill. 30 seconds left on this Arizona power play. 12-minute mark in this second period. Blackhawks cut it off behind the net with Seth Jones. And out to center. Good clear by Jonathan Taves right there. Smart just uses the momentum of the puck to redirect it around Shane Gosses here. A guy you know is pinching down the wall. And now the Blackhawks able to kill off the last 25 seconds of this penalty. Doc was able to milk some seconds. Borkstrom back out of the ice. We go back to five on five. Anthony, the rookie defenseman for Arizona. There's a lot of them on this Coyotes team that is in full rebuild mode. Stockpiling draft picks for the future. Made a ton of trades in the offseason. Here comes Murphy. Puck bounces out to center. Arizona with it. Keller took the body from Ed Whistle. Puck loose in the slot. Galchenyuk with it. Spins it back along the boards. And behind O'Brien, who delivered a big hit back in the first period. Dave pins his man. The Coyotes now in the near side corner. Flurry kicked that one aside. Trying to locate it through bodies. Oh, he's going to draw a penalty here. Stand corrected. <laughs> After the first shot of the period, from Arizona nearly 10 minutes in. Hey, it's a no fees new year. Through January 16th, the Hawks are ringing in the new year with no fees on tickets to home games at the UC. All games, all levels, no fees. Visit blackhawks.com slash no fees to take advantage today. Face off to the left of Flurry. Kirby Doc on the draw. Coyotes win it. They got off to a fast start on face-offs in the first period, and then the Blackhawks even things up as that period went along. Good stick from the Brinkett. Stretch pass. Fisher lost it. And that gets saved by Flirt. It's a dangerous shot with Travis Boyd falling right in front of the net. And looks as if Connor Murphy's gonna get a penalty. Chicago number five, two minutes, cross-checking. And this is something the league has yep. talked a lot about cracking down. And I was just thinking about this the other day that I hadn't really seen that call. It seemed like the refs had gotten away from that, but 
You saw it right there, that little shot right to the back, and it's something they're focusing on. Connor Murphy's gonna sit. But, you know, I'm still not over the last one, Mike. I just thought that that penalty on Henrik Borgstrom is absolutely the wrong call by the rule book. So that's just disappointing when that happens. Chicago penalty to number five, Connor Murphy. The Hawks did kill it off, and now they go back on the PK here. Kessel, deflection, score. Beautifully set up. Travis Boyd gives Arizona the lead. Yeah, nothing Marc-Andre Fleury can do on this one, but this goal really starts off the face-off. You talk about the importance of winning that opening face-off when you're killing, and you see the scramble off the face-off, and the Coyotes outnumber the Blackhawks, they get the puck back, and Phil Kessel, he doesn't waste time, he doesn't want to set the play up, he looks for that shot pass right on the net, Travis Boyd doing a nice job redirecting it right on top of the crease, it's a hard play to defend, and sometimes the power play will just beat you with a good play, Mike, and that's what happened there. But I'll tell you what, soft call, a bad penalty, and then a soft penalty, and you know, that's something the Blackhawks are going to have to overcome. They trail, they come back. Here's Jonathan Taves, and a nice play defensively by Arizona to poke it away. Phil Kessel with 17 assists. He leads the Coyotes in that category, the 34-year-old out of Minnesota. So the Hawks down again, just past the midway point in the second period and in the O zone here. Lead couldn't continue that on to Taves. Arizona out of its own end, lifts it out to center. Caleb Jones back in pursuit. Lawson Kraus behind him. The brink it to center. Kane dropped it back and still couldn't handle it cleanly. Well, it was a fast start for the Hawks to begin this second to tie it. Travis Boyd has put Arizona back up. Skating in his 932nd consecutive game. Fred in audio on the tunes. Well, you know Eddie Olchek's at home enjoying the Taco Bell take because he always gets a good kick out of that. But Phil Kessel, you see the streak he has going right now and pretty impressive. A couple of guys he's chasing, Keith Yandel, his streak continues playing in Philadelphia, and they're all going after a former coach of mine, Doug Jarvis, who has won about 25 Stanley Cups in his career. So I don't think anybody's catching Jarvis. So Iron Man for Phil Kessel, who is part of the same draft class as Jonathan Tapes. Those two separated by just a couple of spots back in that 06 draft. Kessel got picked, of course, by the Bruins. So the Hawks down by one, just under 8.40 to go, second period, after they tied it. Off a of Strom stick, Borgstrom out there with Kane. Borgstrom able to knock it down along the half wall, now back behind the net. Ilya Labushkin out there defensively for Arizona. Out to the slot, here comes Keller for Arizona. Turns back to safety and uses Deneen. Tossed in, he'll head off for a change. And whistle. Trouble with that one after getting it from Flurry. Stillman picks the puck and out to neutral ice. Glove down, back on the stick of Stillman. Arizona up along the boards. Dehan tried to smash it back in. And a whistle stops play at 7.42. Your sports book. Same game parlays you can boost for even more? How about more Chicago Land locations than anyone else? Making it even easier to sign up in person. New customers get risk-free bets up to $2,000. Colby Cohen, the Hawks need to do what these final eight or so minutes in the second? They need to get the puck back into the offensive zone and absolutely continue to possess it. I mean, they were on a streak before those two penalties happened where they were out possessing the Arizona Coyotes two or three to one, really, and they weren't giving anything up. So you got to get the puck back in, use the rush. 
you know, take advantage of the fact that Arizona likes to be aggressive. They like to run out to the walls, and it looks like the Blackhawks are going to have another misfortune here on a delay game penalty. We'll wait for the call. Chicago 77, minor penalty, delay game. Puck over like glass. Kirby's going to go to the box here. You see, he tries to flip the puck up off the glass to get it out and just lofts it up a little too much. You see the reaction from Kirby. We're going to get a chance to see the Blackhawks penalty kill again. you got to win this opening faceoff here, this kill, and get this puck down the ice. Third Hawks penalty in this period alone. Arizona one for two so far. Kessel set up Boyd. And Arizona wins the drop. Here is Kessel along the wall. Back to J.J. Moser, who was a draft pick just this past summer. And already playing in the NHL, we told you his fifth game. Kessel's got it. Back to Moser. Scored two goals in a game last week. Good block there from the Hawks on the PK. Trying to win the puck out of a scrum in the corner. Back to Kessel. Arizona's veteran. Hangs on to it. Goes down low. Kessel can't control it. And out of the zone just over 40 seconds into the penalty. Yeah, both teams going to get fresh legs out on the ice. But that Arizona power play. They're looking for that bumper play. And Andrew Ladd on the last unit. It looks like it's going to be maybe Lawson Krause on this unit, but that's what they're looking for. That little short play, Mike, right around the net in that bumper area. Barrett Eaton was out in front, now goes higher up in the slot off of his stick. The Brinkett races to it and clears up ice. A good clear by the Chicago Blackhawks. Jonathan Tage just took his penalty kill shift, and no surprise there. The Blackhawks able to off a few seconds of this penalty. Krause slings it in. He's second on this team in goals. Pass Keller in behind Schmaltz. Han was there defensively for the Blackhawks. And we've got another penalty coming. Yeah, this is going to be on Lawson Kraus, I think, for holding the stick. And Calvin DeHaan doing a nice job in on the battle. Arizona 67, Both minor Blackhawks penalty for holding the stick. Keeping their feet moving. And you knew the refs were looking for it. And We'll give you a look at it right here if you're following along at home. And it looks like he grabs on to Jujar Karras' stick. There is a good look at it right there. A nice job by our NBC Sports Chicago team. Getting the good angles for us, Mike, from up here in the press box as we look over the ice. Hawks will take that. Four on four here for... 28 seconds, so you'll see Dabrinkit and Kane and out on the ice with Caleb and Seth Jones. So all guys who can move the puck, all guys that are capable passers and shooters. So. Kane couldn't win the draw against Travis Boyd. So after this, a minute 32 forthcoming for the Hawks on the power play. And you got to think Kirby Dog is going to jump out and stay right out on the ice. Keller with speed, slammed on the brakes. Final 10 seconds of four on four. Gostas Bear was looking for Moser. He kept it in. Now Keller leaves it. Gostas Bear fakes. Flurry came out of his crease. Five on four. Doc onto the ice. And, and the Hawks with a minute 30. And I don't understand why they didn't call that a, a high stick. You saw Alex Debrinkit just take a high stick. It's the same thing. It's a follow through. So, you know, when you're a player you're looking for consistency from the officials whichever way they're going to call it they're going to call it but you need consistency and you're not getting that tonight second game in a row where to bring it might be thinking about that so the hawks trying to tie this thing up at three jones with it now to bring it eight of his 20 goals this year have come on the power play Kane with it that got deflected off a stick 50 seconds left to bring it with it Seth Jones back for the cat. Here's Patrick Kane. Dock in front, skating through. Strom on the crease, looking for a tip. A race to it along the wall. To break it, tried to slap at it, battling with Larson. And 30 seconds left on the penalty. Yeah, the Blackhawks changing up the rotation a little bit. Alex to bring it out high. Doesn't like what he sees down around the net. So they start moving around, looking to open other lanes up here on this power play. Kane won the puck, 
Back for Doc. Taves with it. Banks it back for Seth Jones. Now Kane. Final few seconds of the power play. Patrick Kane with it, giving it up for Taves. Circling behind. Back to even strength. Jones' pass got deflected. Hershev out in front. Krause gets to it for Arizona and skates it out to center. Now Ladd takes some contact from Riley Stillman. 3.30 to go in the second. Hawks down by one. Arizona enters. Here's Schmaltz. Fourth year now with the Coyotes for the former Hawk. Traffic in front of Fleury, trying to locate it, still loose, and now a whistle. Some extracurriculars, Stillman involved with Barrett Hayton. 3.08 to go in the second period at Glendale. Chicago number 61, two minutes roughing. We've talked a lot about the, the follow through and what is or isn't a penalty. Well, that was the penalty on Henrik Borgstrom earlier in the second period. You saw it was a follow through. Well, here's later in the period, Alex DeBrinkett takes a stick in the face. Exact same play, no penalty. So again, the right call would be no penalty for both. And then here's right at the end of the period, or at the end of the, the whistle before we went to break, that was Riley Stillman who got a penalty for that in front of the net. So again, the right call, Mike, is no penalty when you're following through. But if you're the officials, you have to be consistent. You have to call it the same way. And you gotta understand the rule. And it ends up being after the Stillman roughing minor, the fourth penalty for the Hawks this period. And so they're back on the kill. A minute 35 on the Arizona power play. Moser with it, working with Kessel. Phil Kessel, who had his 200th career power play assist earlier this period. Back to the point for Moser. Kept it in, threw it out in front. Flurry with the pad, and Kessel couldn't get it home. Flurry's without his stick. And the Hawks clear. Yeah, great job by Marc-Andre Fleury. And when you see him battling in practice, that is one of the reasons why there is just no quit in 29 in White's game. He battles for everything. And boy, does that come in handy on a, pen on a penalty kill. Kevin Leikman said it recently. He is as competitive as anyone you will find. 50 seconds left on the power play for Arizona. They enter. Here's Keller. Dangerously threw it. Looking for someone on the receiving end. Keller again, cross ice. Couldn't connect with Schmaltz. Gostis there. And cleared out by the Hawks. Doc races onto it. Gostis Bear retreating. Kirby Doc with it, trying to ward off Gostis Bear. Shorty chances denied. Vamelka makes the stop on Jujar Kara. Yeah, Kirby Doc doing a nice job using his body, but this penalty kill, this, this penalty kill has been about Marc-Andre Fleury and how aggressive he's been. Look at him battling on the crease. Two saves, three saves. Then you see him throwing his stick down, and here's the last chance where Kirby Doc sets up Drew Jarkera, who comes off the bench. He gets between the coverage, but I like how Kirby Doc leaned on Shane Goss's fear. He wins that battle. He gets the net, and Good opportunity for the Blackhawks shorthanded with 18 seconds left in this penalty kill. Trying to finish this off in the final 90 seconds of the second period as well. Hawks down by one. It's been an eventful second period. Shot from O'Brien. Turned away by Flirt. Yeah, that one stung him a little bit. He's fixing his helmet right now behind the play. And that caught him up high. Back to even strength for the final minute of the second. Arizona with it behind Vamelka. Three shots on that power play from Arizona. Jeff Jones drives it back in. The Brinkett with it. Out there with Borgstrom and Kane at the end of this second. Here's the Brinkett. Off of his stick to O'Brien and out to center. Oops, 
Ingram in pursuit of Keller. Coming up on 20 seconds left in the period. Caleb Jones wedges off his man. Back for Seth Jones, final 10 seconds. Up ice, here's Kane. Patrick Kane, now Seth Jones getting involved, and Jones fires into the belly of Famelka at the end of the second period. And a much better period by the Chicago Blackhawks, Mike. I mean, just night and day difference. The Hawks tied it. They now trail. We go to the third on the other side, but first, it's Pat, Kaylee, and Charlie. All right, Mike, so a much better period, at least to start for the Blackhawks as they climb back into this one and even it up at two, but then it's a parade to the penalty box. At least one of those was a bad call. Kaylee, your thoughts here on the middle frame in Arizona? Yeah, P PB, I think that they missed on the Henrik Borgstrom penalty, obviously, but when, when you start to take three, four, five penalties a game, it's not a recipe for success if you want to win consistently in this league. But much like what we saw in the Colorado game, I thought the Hawks did a great job at coming back and responding in the second period, trailing by two. Great job tying it up. Yeah, and the, the Blackhawks outplayed them at five on five. Like the Arizona didn't have a scoring chance, um, you know, the first 13 minutes of that second period. So stay out of the penalty box, and and they would have put themselves in a good position to be in front. Let's go back to Mike and Colby in Arizona. There might be some time left on. Yeah, we didn't go anywhere yet, guys, and a good thing, because that is indeed the case, PB. They're going to throw 1.2 back up. I think PB, Kaylee, and Charlie could have taken it from there anyway. They could have called that last second. I, I, li I like Kaylee's chances at play-by-play -play for 1.2 <laughs> seconds. What do you think? Well, Fleury will come out. Extra skater on. She understands fashion. She would understand the transitional jacket, so she could do it. Booth analyst, studio analyst, the works. Kaylee instead 1.2 here tick off the clock and that will do it that long last for the second period so guys coming right back at you PB oh it was compelling and rich that 1.2 <laughs> seconds uh, <laughs> let's get back to what happened to start this second period one minute in the Hawks get back in this game as you know, it's, it's a Murphy shot, the rebound to Kurashev. Big time save by Vimilka. But then Kirby Dock, about 10 minutes away from Camelback Ranch, where the White Sox <laughs> hopefully will train soon, bats this thing in like he took BP this afternoon with LaRusse's game. Unfortunately, he can't sign another contract right now because the, the players are in a lockout, but that's great. Uh, Hand-eye coordination by Kirby Dock and a good confidence-building goal for him. I know he's been struggling to have that consistency on offense this season, so nice to see that one go in. Especially in the first minute of the period, you know, that's what we wanted to see a little bit more from the Hawks starting early, and they did that tonight. Transition here, five minutes in. Taves has been playing really noticeable hockey as of late. Uh, Mackenzie Entwistle, he scores to make it two off. Mackenzie Entwistle has been really good. I think in his last six games that he's played he has four points but he just works hard Derek King said he's a player that comes ready every day he's going to be a big part of the future of this organization but like you said great pass from Jonathan today test drive our award-winning lineup of cars and SUVs today Xfinity X5 count on powerful and secure Wi-Fi for all your connected devices Xfinity X5 can your internet do that Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois choose Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois the card to carry through it all and by your local Kia dealers. Visit Kia.com to discover movement that inspires. at least for now, still call home. The Hawks down by one <laughs> as we start the third. We welcome you back, Colby Cohen. I see what you did there. Mike Monaco in for Pat and Eddie. Uh, great to be hanging out with you. 
What would be great would to see a, a Hawks win here. We already have had some fun goals tonight. We thought we would do a flashback because Kirby Knox's goal looked pretty similar to a couple years ago. Yeah, Dominic Kubalik knocks this one out of the air against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And we saw that earlier in this game. Kirby Doc lowering that bottom hand, using that Canadian baseball swing of his from the Little League days to bang that one in against the Arizona Coyotes. And Go to Twitter, tell us what you think, NBCS Blackhawks or NHL Blackhawks. Tell us which one you liked more. We're interested to hear from you, Mike. Who thought we would get uh, La Russa mentioned during intermission live? But we did, and we start the third. The Hawks down by one at the start of this three-game road trip against the lowly Coyotes. You heard PD say it at the end of intermission live. You gotta get two points here. Dahan was looking for a tip from Entwistle out in front. And this third period is brought to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. So they talked during the break about adjustments, of course, staying out of the box. Charlie so deftly defined what a high sticking should be. W what do you want to see from Derek King's bunch here in the third? Well, it's got to be a push. And you're not going to win this game on the first shift, although it's nice to get a goal early. But it it's about doing things the right way. It's not making those lateral turnovers in the neutral zone and really applying that pressure offensively without you know, taking unnecessary risks because this is a one-goal game. You still have 20 minutes. Taves, Kane, to bring it out there on a line together to start this third. With Jones and McCabe. Keller throws it into the glove of Flurry. Well, you heard PB mention it as well. Somewhat amazingly, maybe not so with Arizona's record. This is only the second time all season that the Coyotes have entered the third period leading. And they've got the advantage. 3-2 on the Hawks. Yeah, they're not a team that really knows how to play with the lead or what to do with the lead. So the Blackhawks have to take advantage of that. Keller deflects it and keeps it in along the blue line. Up and into the netting, a minute into the third. This is an Arizona franchise that has missed the playoffs in 14 of the last 18 years. We told you they've been selling off assets, stockpiling picks. Next two years, they've got four first rounders and six second round picks lined up. Yeah, they're going to have an opportunity to reshape this franchise. I think everybody's seen some of the noise out in the media about their new arena. Are they going to be here in Glendale? You made a wise crack about it as we started the third period. I'm not sure how many people are up on top of that, but we sure got a kick out of it, Mike. Appreciate it, nonetheless. Baby. Colby Cohen, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you. Third period action from Glendale, Arizona. Juchar Kara with it at center ice for the Hawks. Melka in behind. Again, he's coming off 46 saves his last time out. Gave up two to the Hawks early on in short order in a span of about five minutes in the second. On with it, stick handles out at center. Can't connect with Kara and the Coyotes with it. Kessel cuts it off and hangs on to it in the neutral zone. With a link up there. And in behind Seth Jones. Johan Larson in pursuit. Back to the blue line. Kraus with it. Kubalik on it. Kane with it. Finds Kubalik. Trying to nudge it ahead. And now swat it into the corner. Moser back to get it, jabbing at it up along the boards. Kraus turns away, and all the way back down, icing waved off. First two and a half minutes in this third. Blackhawks with it out of their own zone. Kurashev. Now Ed Whistle into the zone. Plays it to himself, collects in the corner. Matched up with Dyson Mayo. Kirby Doc's had a strong game tonight for the Hawks. Caleb Jones threw it out in front. Arizona off the ricochet. Fisher chips it in. Kirby Doc trying to fight for positioning there. Stillman able to grab it. Here come the Hawks. Ass couldn't find Caleb Jones for Riley Stillman. 
Hey, the Blackhawks have teamed up with Fifth Third Arena, the practice home of the Hawks, to create a memorable pregame experience this new year, including a tour of the Blackhawks locker room, pregame buffet, open skate, and guaranteed gate giveaway. Scan now the QR code to secure yours. Face off to the left of Marc Andre Fleury. After two periods, the Hawks had the edge in scoring chances, and right there, Arizona makes it a two goal margin. Leighton Keller makes it 4 2. Marc Andre Fleury never saw this shot, never even reacted to this shot. And what looked like it could have been a harmless shot from out at the point finds its way in through traffic as Clayton Keller creates a little bit of space for himself. Look at all the bodies in front of the net. One, two, three, four, five, six bodies screening Marc-Andre Fleury and Andrew Ladd in the blue paint. And I mean, Fleury never sees this puck. I mean, he doesn't react whatsoever. The the puck. Looks like we're gonna have a Chicago's challenging the play for goaltender interference prior to the puck. And there you go. The line. We're going to see a challenge here from Chicago for goaltender interference. And was Andrew Ladd impeding Marc Andre Fleury from playing his position in front of the net? And we'll take a couple of looks at it right here. And I mean, he certainly establishing position Andrew Ladd in top of the crease and this is the look that is going to tell us what we need you see the contact with Stillman and that pushes him back into flurry and you know I don't think this is going to be goaltender interference uh, I think that's contact with Stillman I think he bumps back in after the contact but then I do think he lets Marc-Andre Fleury play his position there so we'll see what the refs see I don't really know what to expect. We've seen a lot of inconsistency with the high stick rule. Uh, but obviously, Dylan Crawford and Matt Meacham, who do a great job with the video work for the Chicago Blackhawks, they saw something they did not like there. They radio into the bench. They talk to the coaching staff. Rob Cookson's the one who wears the earpiece. And the challenge is on, Mike. Flurry started pointing a bit as well. And it wasn't just Ladd lined up. There was a ton of traffic, as we told you. You can count them up. But certainly, Ladd taking After some contact the there play, from Stillman. was determined there was no goaltender interference. We have a good goal. Right in penalty on Chicago for the other game. Now the Blackhawks are going to be shorthanded two minutes. That's what happens when you use that challenge and you aren't successful. You get that two-minute penalty for delay of game. Now the Blackhawks are going to have to kill this one off for the coaching staff. Strom skates over. And you saw the note from Rossi. Five goals the last five games from Clayton Keller. Yeah, he's been their best player. Consistent overall. You know, Shane Gostasphere has also been very meaningful to this team, obviously. But, you know, the, as Kaylee Chelio said in the pregame show, Keller's the guy who... He's the straw that stirs the drink, I believe is the way she phrased it. The guy who was drafted seventh overall in 2016, one spot out of the guy the Hawks first traded, Alex Nylander. The best point per game rate for Keller since his first full year in the NHL four years ago. And so he makes it a two-goal margin. The Hawks down a pair and on the kill. Remember, they were very busy on the kill in the second. Kessel skates it forward, passes off. Kessel gets it back, drops it back to the blue line. Johan Larson shooting wide. Kessel tapped out in the corner, retrieves the puck for the Coyotes. First four minutes of the third. 50 seconds into the power play. Larson's got his second tonight. He scores and it's 5 2. Just a, an unfortunate effort here by the Blackhawks and the power play going to work for Arizona and the puck movement down low. Jake McCabe was a little bit wrapped up with Andrew Ladd and you can see he's 
turning his head, trying to shoulder check, but the time, by the time he does, this puck moves down low, across the crease, and that's an easy goal for the power play. Johan Larson finishes for the Arizona Coyotes, but just not good enough, Mike. It really isn't. You need your kill to bail you out. And your coach takes an opportunity to get one off the board with the coach's challenge. And what happens when you're playing from behind all that. Larson, the 10th year pro, hadn't scored all season entering tonight, and of course, yeah, he's got two in this one now. So it's a three goal deficit. First five minutes here in the third. Arizona with it. And now the Hawks out towards center. Tereshev chasing in behind against Labushkin. Dehaan, passing over to Strom. And when Strom with it, that gets deflected up into the netting at 15.05 in the third. Well, Colby, from a, a player's perspective, where do you start when you, you stare this down, down by three here? Yeah, it's just not good enough. I mean, you know, the Blackhawks had a good second period, but when you're playing the worst team in the league and you, you know, you're looking to claw yourself back up the standings, you just cannot come out and have a first 20 minutes where you're flat. And all of a sudden, you're playing uphill, you're chasing the game. And yeah, a couple of bad decisions by the referees in that second period. But again, you put yourself in that position you know, by being behind and being susceptible uh, to those kills. Fisher skated it out for Arizona. The Hawks back with it. Borgstrom and now Kubalik looking back for Borgstrom. He got his stick on it in the corner, up along the boards, and the Hawks take over. Kept in by Strom, now to Han with it. Spins it back, slides it behind for Kubalik. Dominic Kubalik still with it. His shot didn't get through Mayo. Started the scoring for Arizona in this one if you're just joining us. Strom behind had won it. And now Arizona behind Pamelka. Coyote sky it back in towards Seth Jones. There's Bodan back out there. He had just the one shift in the second period after none in the first. The Brinkett Taves out there for the Hawks. Down by three, trying to cut into this here in Glendale, Arizona. Seth Jones threw it back in. Taves in pursuit. Jammed up along the boards. Back to Stillman. D to D working with McCabe, and the Hawks score. Yeah, this one goes off of Taves for sure. He was out in front, and the Hawks cut into the deficit. And trim it to two. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Mike, but it's a good work by Jonathan Taves getting around that net, using that big frame. And you know, this isn't going to be an easy comeback, but getting that goal right there certainly helps. You see the shot from Jake McCabe. You see the net front work by Jonathan Taves, just bullying his way into the crease. The goaltender gets a piece of it. And, I'm not sure if this one did hit off of Jonathan Taves or not. Yeah, this one definitely looks like it redirected. And good work by Jonathan Taves in around the top of the crease. And that's another goal for the captain as his offense continues to find its way. All five of his goals, the last nine games now, as Entwistle delivers a crushing blow behind the net. Second game in a row for Taves, too, that he gets one in a blue-collar variety. Derek King has talked so much about some more greasy goals. Taves was backpedaling there. The Coyotes win it with Kelly. Two-goal margin here in the third. Still a long way to go with 13 minutes remaining. Yeah, good play there by Jake McCabe to keep his gap up and finish the check on Clayton Keller. He's an offensive player. You've got to make him pay the price when he touches the puck. It's a, it's a small play, Mike, but you know you make 10, 12 of those plays a game, and you're going to end up on the right side. Of it. Arrow with it along the boards. And the Coyotes take it away. Whistle stops play at 12.32 here in the third. So, the Hawks got down by three, but Jonathan Taves with a quick response 
What more do the Blackhawks have in store in the third? On the latest episode of the Blackhawks Talk podcast presented by Coors Light, PB and Charlie discuss the current state of the Hawks and the importance of this road trip. Subscribe for free today. And we heard Riley Stillman talking about just that today. He was preaching some urgency when he chatted with the media. He said, we need two points. We got to get going in the right direction. And I think that's something that they're going to need here in the last 12 and a half minutes, Mike, because you need two goals. And you got to think Arizona is going to try to sit back and play defensively as Seth Jones fires this one in on the net and Lamelka swallows it up. But this is an opportunity here because when you look at the way Arizona plays, they're an aggressive team, Mike. They like to come down the wall. So now it's uncomfortable for them when they're sitting back. So you know, Chicago's got to take advantage of that. They've got to get some pucks at the net and try to create some things offensively and make things hard on Vimelka. Kane threw it on net at the rookie goalie for Arizona. You saw the milestone goal that was for Jonathan Taves trying to start a hefty comeback bid for the Hawks. Taves came to break it, and the Jones brothers on the blue line for the Hawks. Off the faceoff, Fisher. Races to the puck, matched up with the break it in front of the Coyotes bench. Well, the Hawks had a great start to the second before the penalties began. That was a similar second period to how Tuesday was, and that's been the best stretch that they've played in this game. Yeah, and you've seen them since they scored that goal. They've started to come alive offensively, and you see a little bit of jump in their step. And this is a hard lesson to learn. I mean, you've got to hope that they're going to pull themselves back into this game and, and tie this up here at some point. But, you know, a lot of this is self-inflicted, Mike, and things that they can certainly clean up. But it, it's, it's got to get back to that commitment level that we saw that when this team, you know, first got into Derrick King's hands. Arizona with it. They chip it in behind with Moser. DeHaan gets it for the Hawks. Kershaw up ice. Found Entwistle. Now try to connect with Doc. Behind for Entwistle and Arizona with it out of its own end. Schmaltz can't sidestep DeHaan. Connor Murphy matched up with Galchenyuk. DeHaan hounding Schmaltz. Relatively quiet tonight. Now Doc with it. Kubalik couldn't reel it in. Backhand try. Kraus a second whack at it. Couldn't get it cleanly. Good communication behind the net there by Calvin DeHaan. I could hear him from up here yell, Docker, Docker. And that's what you got to do. You've got to be the eyes for your teammate. When you've got the puck along the wall, Mike, that communication down on the ice just so important. Kubalik was very slow to get up there for the Hawks. He skates off. This one pinned at center ice. And the whistle stops play at 10.41. You mentioned Dominic Kubalik. A little slow to get up off the ice and over to the bench. You see the collision up the top of your screen. I don't think he saw... Johan Larson. We saw Larson kind of put his hands up like his incidental contact. Big thick player there. He's got a couple of goals in this one. Hawks down a pair coming up on the midway point in the third. That one ricochets into the seats. It's the fourth game back from the layoff. For the Hawks, how do you think stylistically, Colby? This is something you and I were chatting about earlier today. Stylistically, coming off the layoff, how that affected the way they were playing under Derek King before. You. Yeah, well, one of the most impressive things that I saw in this team when they were first taken over by Derek King was that commitment to, you know, doing the uncomfortable things in the game, which is blocking shots, dumping pucks, you know, almost. You know, dummying down the style of play to win close, low-scoring, tight games. As you've seen, since the break has commenced, 
You know, they've gotten away from that. Those lateral plays, Derek King, those turnovers right inside, five feet in the blue line, out of the blue line. And this team needs to get back to, you know, being thorough with the puck in those dangerous areas. I've got the puck here with Caleb Jones out of his own end. Lifting it to the corner for Taves. Taves wheels it back to Seth Jones, and up high, Vamelka stops it. At 9.44 in the third period in the desert with the Blackhawks trailing Arizona by two. Yeah, Kelly makes a good point when she talks about, you know, needing to simplify things. And that seems to be when the Blackhawks are at their best, Mike. It's when they've simplified the game. It's when they're playing straight lines. It's not a lot of east-west hockey. Obviously, certain players have different le leash lengths, we'll call it, out on the ice, 88 and 12, namely two of them. But, you know, you've got 10 minutes here left in this third period, and it it's time. Coach Charlie gets his wish as well. <laughs> it's Kane, Tades, Debrinkit, the line out there for the Hawks. But Arizona back with it in the Ozone with 9.30 to go now in this third period. Clayton Keller's pass out of the reach of the veteran defenseman Anton Swalman. Arizona still with it in the corner, trying to work behind on Seth Jones. This is Johan Larson. Got tripped up a bit. Now Phil Kessel. And now a penalty coming. And it looks like perhaps against Larson. It is going to be against Larson. He's going to go for tripping. Arizona number 22, minor penalty for tripping. I thought Seth Jones might have gotten away with yeah. a trip a few seconds before, so the refs noticing the fact that they've missed a couple of penalties tonight. I mean, that's an easy one. I don't know what Larson's yelling about. I mean, we need to trip a guy's feet up like that. So uh, here's the big opportunity for the Blackhawks. Patrick Kane over at the bench, switching up his stick. So hopefully that magic power play stick's gonna bring the Blackhawks a little bit of luck on this power play. A superstitious guy. He's out there on the power play that you see is 0 for 3 with a half dozen shots so far for the Hawks in this one. Doc skates net front. Back to the point here, Seth Jones. Doc camped out in front. Strom with it. Now he works with Kane. Kane's got it and hangs on to it here. Seth Jones, top of the circle. Knock out in front to break it, trying to swat at it. And over to the boards, 35 seconds into the penalty. Here's Kane, top of the circle, Doc on a ricochet, takes it back. Seth Jones moves it along, Kane a one-timer. And it squirts out, kept in by Jones. Oh, that one hits off of Alex to break it, skate. And unlucky bounce there. Hawks initially went to swap out the unit, they stay out there. Jones with a pass. Kane shoots wide. Trying to bury one on Vamelka. Short-handed chance, Kraus skates in, and it's on the line and kept out. What a play by Seth Jones. Oh my God, we gotta go back and show you that one when we have an opportunity, but Seth Jones with a game saver. Kane gets it back, nearly scored. Taves and Kane shouting at it, and throws it. Wow, what a sequence of events. Patrick Kane just went post to post. Can't believe that one didn't go in. The hockey gods not smiling on his fortune at the moment as the players all come together out in front of the net, but what a wild sequence of events. It starts at the other end, the breakaway by Lawson Crouch. And watch the puck just sitting there in the desperation play by Seth Jones. That's a big time defensive awareness play by number four to dive across the crease and keep this puck out and keep the Blackhawks within reach. And then it was the other end, the nifty passing play from Kane down to Kirby Dock. And Kaner goes post to post. Oh, man. No lucky bounce there for 88. What a sequence. Trying to make it a one-goal game. 25 seconds left on the Hawks' power play. Taves took some contact in front near the net. Bangs it around to Kubalik. Final 15 seconds on the man advantage. 
Coyotes grab the puck, kept in at the blue line. Kubalik slides it over. Kurashev out in front, trying to connect. And now Kubalik. Kurashev with it along the wall. We're back to even strength. His pass That's deflected a up, and That's a it should be a delay yep. of game penalty. Yep. And the Hawks are going right back on the power play. Same thing Keller did earlier, but this time it was... Anton Strawman with the delay of game, batting the puck Arizona up and over the glass. And here's a look at it as he's glass. trying to possess the Phil Kurashev pass. Watch one, two, right up and over. And we'll go back and look at Patrick Kane hitting both posts and staying out. Look how close that one is, Mike. Oh, boy. Even a guy like Patrick Kane probably can't do that on purpose. And on both ends of the ice, <laughs> as close as you can get. You're getting your money's worth tonight, Mike. How about it? All right, the Hawks going to work. Seven minutes to go in this third, down by two, back on the power play. Herbie Doc kept his footing. And now to break it. Back to Seth Jones. Jones gives it up for Kane. Patrick Kane, his shot got deflected. Batted out of the air, and Dabrinkit scores! It's a one-goal game! Well, Mike, I don't know who had a bigger celebration here, Alex Dabrinkit or you, when that puck just went across the line. The big fist bump from my partner to my left, celebrating the Blackhawks goal. And Alex Dabrinkit, what does he do? He does what we can all count on him to do. He scores power play goals, the puck movement all around the box. Patrick Kane using the shot, but how about Kirby Doc? Back to the batting the puck up and out of the air again. You see him lower his hand on his stick, knocks this one across the crease. Sorry, it was Dylan Strom, not Kirby Doc. And then the opposite way, Alex Dabrinkit banging that thing home, and we got a one goal game. Some BP in the desert. One goal <laughs> game with less than six and a half to go in the third. Is it spring training yet? You heard them talking about it during intermission live. The Hawks still with work to do. Trying to win this puck in their defensive zone. Calvin DeHaan does. You're going to think you're calling a Red Sox game soon, Mike. <laughs> you're going to forget who you're standing next to. Steve Stone, he's out here in the <laughs> desert somewhere, right? Six minutes to go as the puck trickles in toward Fleury. McCabe wheels out of trouble. In front of the Hawks bench, Arizona is offside. Alex Dabrinkit joins Jonathan Taves with goals in the third. The Hawks down by one. Drill. First, it was Kirby Doc in the second period, choking down his hand on his stick and banging the first goal of the game. And then it's Dylan Strom in the third, choking up, bunting the puck across the crease to the Cat, who finishes on the back door. And we got a one goal game with just under six minutes to go. All of a sudden, the Blackhawks are playing with a little momentum. We sure do. This game has been off the rails. That one. It's deflected into the corner. Stillman grabs it for the Hawks. And out to center ice. Back in behind toward Fleury. The Hawks craving a couple points here against the team with the fewest points in the NHL Arizona. Back went tumbling at center. Kubalik with it. Now Doc trying to time it up. Here comes Arizona. Up ice, Andrew Ladd hangs onto it, and Flurry stops it at 5-12 in the third. Weather in Chicago can vary drastically depending on the neighborhood you're in. Don't be caught guessing. Download the NBC Chicago app to get live radar alerts and the most accurate forecasts. And boy, has it been cold the last couple of days in Chicago. That's my first introduction to the Midwest cold. I thought. Philadelphia and Boston were cold cities. My wife asked me the other day, when she took the dog out, where do we live? This is too cold. You take the dog out. And the transition piece in Glendale. <laughs> out in the desert, the Valley of no, the no. Sun. Go for the parka. 
Hawks down by one. Caleb Jones is pinned in the corner. And the Hawks out to center. Taves it'll race for it. Glad behind. Seth Jones climbs forward. And Patrick Kane leads it for Jonathan Taves. Back for Kane. To the point, Seth Jones tried to step forward. Now Arizona with it. And less than 440 to go in the third. And it's green light right now. If you're a defenseman on the Chicago Blackhawks, you're pinching down the walls. You've got to be joining the rush. Seth Jones is going to activate Caleb Jones. All six defenders for Chicago need to be involved, Mike, in the play offensively. And Whistle able to hang on to that. It got past Strom. Daha. Now Borkstrom. Murphy steps up. And Whistle along the blue line. Murphy centers and covered with 4.02 remaining in the third. Play down the wall to Connor Murphy. You saw the rotation up at the top of the point. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Mike. Connor Murphy sort of activating, running himself down the wall. Not really an offensive defenseman, a former Phoenix Coyote himself. I think they were still probably called the Phoenix Coyotes when he played there. Former first rounder in 2011. Less than four to go now in the third. Kurashev, Doc, and Kubalik, the line for the Hawks. Here's Phil Kurashev. Doc rides it along the railing. Down there along the half wall. The Hawks trying to win it. Doc does. Got it to Stillman. Back from a cave. He throws it out in front toward Vamelka. Doc trying to gain possession for the Hawks here. Coming up on three minutes to go. Down by one. Fresh legs come on for the Blackhawks. 88, 12, and 19. Need a goal. The Jones brothers, two puck movers. Caleb goes back and icing the call. 2.53 to go in a wild affair in Glendale, Arizona. Taves always so excellent on the draw. He wins it for the Hawks. The Brinkett wrestled it free. Kane and Seth Jones tugging for it. Now Caleb Jones and De Brinkett. Alex De Brinkett finds Kane. He shoots. Kicked off a skate. Caleb Jones, a deflection from Taves, goes wide. Seth Jones pinches forward. 2.25 to go, the puck in the corner. Seth Jones came out of the zone, and now Arizona with it. And they will toss it in. And you got to think Mark andre Fleury is going to start looking at the bench. Derek King's getting that extra attack already. As they go up the ice. Kubelik, Kurashev, and Doc. Here's Dominic Kubelik trying to get to the backhand. Flurry goes toward the bench. The extra skater is on for the Hawks. Just under two minutes to go. And the Hawks pull even on the road to start this trip. Down in the Han up ice. Now Kershaw. He throws it in behind. Doc racing toward it. The puck ricochets. And the Coyotes knock it to center. Dahan slams that in. Knocked down by Stroh. Coming up on 120 to go. Loved down by Murphy. Didn't get all the way through to Kane. Costas Bear lifts this one. And Dahan back defensively. Coming up on this final minute. Hawks looking for the equalizer. Last minute of play in the period. 
Puck goes all the way back down wide of the net. And icing at 53.1. And now the Blackhawks will get a chance to rest. 88, 12, 4, guys who have logged well up and over. 20 minutes of ice time tonight, but how about Kirby Dock leading the way for the time forward out, group in ice time? Mackenzie Entwistle hence to the bench, but Kirby Dock's played 21-57, almost 22 minutes for 77 tonight. And Seth Jones doing his normal thing up over 25 minutes as the players all huddle around Coach Rob Cookson as he draws up a play off this offensive zone draw. And you gotta think, Mike, there's going to be some sort of misdirection. I mean, the puck's got to come back, but then, you know, you got to think 88's looking to misdirect and pop out along the wall because the puck always runs through 88 on a five on four, a six on five. So if Jones isn't shooting it, you got to think they're looking to get it into Kane's hands, and then you know what movie comes next. <laughs> Those two chatting as they skate back onto the ice. Kirby Doc. Has played well throughout. Heavy minutes, as you said. Yeah, keep an eye on 88. He's going to move down that side. If that puck comes back to Jones, and you'll see him get around that face-off circle on the opposite side if he ends up with the puck. Taves has won 12 of 19. He wins this back to the bracket. Kane tees one up. A save pops into the air by Vamelka. And cleared out by the Coyotes just wide. 41.5 to go. How about Derek King showing a little confidence in Mackenzie Entwistle? Show you the last faceoff win by the Chicago Blackhawks. It's a team effort at this point, Mike. You got all hands on deck to get in and help win these draws. Taves wins another. Seth Jones with it. Now to Brinkett. That shot got blocked. Coyotes with it. Out to center. Skating into the zone, and they score. It's a hat trick for Johan Larson. An empty netter in the final 30 seconds. Uh, there's no moral victory tonight, Mike. I mean, they, you know, certainly the Blackhawks made a push. They made this game interesting. They didn't quit in the third period, but ultimately, when you come in and you play the worst team in the league, you've got to come out of this with two points. Frustration abounds for the Hawks here in Glendale. about Kane going post to post. Look at that empty net goal. And you see the frustration setting in that Mike talked about. Smacks the hat away, not happy to see that out on the ice. Final 20 seconds. Here in Glendale. Flurry makes a stop on a puck up high. Leans into the corner along the boards. Kubalik in pursuit out to center. And the final five seconds of this one from Gila River Arena. Just the seventh win of the year for Arizona and their first by more than a goal. As the Hawks battled back here in the third, got within a goal. They fall to the Coyotes tonight. Six for the final. The Hawks fall to Arizona for Colby Cohen and our entire crew behind the scenes, led by Mitch Kersner, Dave Turner, Dave Ross, and the whole gang. Mike Monaco sitting in for Pat tonight, saying so long. Post game live coming up. Pat, Kaylee, and Charlie.